So for the last few weeks, I've been testing my disaster relief car. It's an off-grid solar power system that anyone can build in an hour. And this all-in-one is fantastic. For the last few weeks, I connected this to my solar carport. And this little thing was running my entire bunker vault. So today we're gonna add a second battery and I wanna show you how much I've used on this system so far. And check it out, 444 kilowatt hours. It's almost half a megawatt hour with this little tiny box. But keep in mind, SunGold Power does not manufacture this. Lots of companies sell this exact same model. It's actually made by SRNE. Fortunately, a lot of reviews for this thing on Amazon are for their other models, which are not made by the same company at all. And I had lots of problems with other SunGold Power inverters. But if you find one that's manufactured manufactured by SRNE, it's usually really good. Some of the best inverters I've ever reviewed on my channel were made by them. So I told this company, you need to make different listings if you have a different manufacturer. You can't put them under one listing because those bad reviews for their bad products make everything else look bad. But for me, I found a fantastic deal and it was super cheap. Also, EcoWorthy sells the same thing, so check it out. Sometimes you can get these for super cheap. Most of these products are like that. Even the server rack batteries, they all use the same BMSs. These companies do not make it. They do the customer service and support, and some of them will do the software, but the actual devices are only made by a few companies in China. And if you can find a good deal and you get the same stuff, then why not buy it? There's no reason to go with a specific brand or be loyal to one. Now I noticed the EcoWorthies are very thin server rack batteries like the Ruxu. So I'm gonna try to fit a second battery on here and strap it down. Also, the new EcoWorthy actually does have handles. They just sent these out. Mine didn't come with them, which makes it a lot easier to move. That's a little sketchy. <laughs> Technically, there's enough there to hold it. Also, I did my testing in my bunker vault. It was like 110 degrees 24 seven here in Vegas. I think it's gonna work. It works. Oh my God. Also, with two batteries, you have two extra terminals. First, turn everything off. And the system is running, super simple. And this is how I connect it to the bunker vault. I put these server rack batteries in parallel with this massive 60 kilowatt hour battery bank. And then I connect the solar right here. So this is where I connected the carport. But that was complete overkill. I just wanted to put a lot of power through this thing to see if it would break. And I got to max it out, which was fantastic. But for now, I'm just gonna connect the bunker vault solar array. So we need to turn it off. Oh no. And then flip it on. And now we have power. Now we're gonna connect the battery. And this is not recommended. This is only for my testing in a concrete metal building. This many parallel strings is an awful idea. Please check out my current sharing video where I talk more about how to do this safely. But for me, nothing will catch on fire in here, so I don't really care. And each battery has its own breakers, so it's not that big of a deal. Also, there is no communication set up here for any of my systems. So 12,000 XP, the Flex Boss, this thing, I'm using lead acid mode. So I set the absorption, whatever the battery recommends, and then I set the low voltage disconnect to 46 volts if I have lots of batteries in parallel. Also, you can connect eco-worthy batteries to these PowerPro batteries in parallel just fine. And you could have one battery communicating with your inverter and all the others not. Just be sure that if you are using communication that you have enough batteries connected to it so it doesn't throttle the charging. But besides that, you can connect whatever batteries you want. I have a whole tutorial called Current Sharing 101 and it teaches you how to connect mismatched batteries. The number one thing that you need to know is all the batteries have to be the same nominal voltage, and that's if they have the same amount of cells with the same chemistry. So these are all lithium iron phosphate batteries, which is 99% of the market now, and all of these have 16 cells in series. So I can connect them together in parallel without any issue. Be sure to connect your batteries with large enough conductors so that the overcurrent protection device actually works. And so that you can supply your loads with enough current without current sharing issues. But more on that in my other video, so please check it out. I go into much more greater detail. Also, the sine wave on this unit is better than the more expensive inverters. I'm telling you, the company that manufactures this is fantastic. 
But again, there's like 20 companies selling this thing. So it really doesn't matter who you buy it from. Unless one of them has bad customer service and support or something, and there will always be one out of 100 that will fail. But for most of the distributors that I talked to, the SRNE have the lowest RMA rates out there. Now for this system, we use server rack batteries, but you don't have to. You could easily use some Ruksu vertical mount batteries instead. And these things are fantastic. They have a 16 kilowatt hour capacity. And this one is UL listed and waterproof. So it's like a Power Pro battery from EG4, but cheaper and with more capacity. All you'd have to do is mount this in a garage against a wall, just put it on the floor and then mount this on the wall. And then you have a system, connect some solar panels, connect the loads panel, whatever you have to do. Now there's nothing new about an all-in-one, but the performance for the price is crazy now. If you match it up with a cheap battery, you're gonna have a really cool system. Also, it's very quiet. Right now we're running a few thousand watts and you can barely hear it. All of my other all-in-ones are much louder and it's pretty surprising because the output is so good for its size. Usually that means that the fans are gonna be loud. But some four members have noticed that they can put quieter fans in their inverters. So hopefully these manufacturers can speed up and add more expensive quieter fans because too many of them are just too loud. So I'm starting to tell the companies that. So anyways, just a quick update video on this thing. I love it, it works great. If you do have any issues, please post about it on the forum and I will see you in the next video, bye.